I think I'm on, dude. Hello? All right. Oh, man. Uh, so, I'm Andrew. Um, hey, I'm Andrew. And uh, I, I want to start. Are we good? Is everybody here that needs to be here? Is everybody gone that needs to be gone? Okay. Um, I want to start by telling you that I am nervous. Okay. Because I've been coming to this camp for, man, it's so bright up here. Like, I need my, I need my sunglasses on. <laughs> um, I have been coming to this camp since 04-ish, 05, somewhere in there. I can't remember what year. Um, and I finally tricked the directors into letting me speak. Uh, this is the first year that um, I've been able to bring a message. And so I've always looked up to those that speak um, this week at Kent because some of the people that um, have spoken in the past that I've listened to have been um, just mentors, whether they knew it or not. Um, they have been mentors to me and have pointed me in the direction of Christ um, whenever I wasn't and have lifted me up whenever I was low and have spoken into my life. And so I count it as a huge responsibility, and um, I, I just don't want to screw that up, if that makes sense. And so um, a little bit about me. I don't go to any of y'all's churches, I don't think. Um, I go to Marsh Swamp in Wilson. Yes, that's the name of my church, Marsh Swamp. And um, I teach math at a high school there in Wilson. I'm a nerd, I guess. How many of us love our math teachers? Yes. Um, and so we'll, we'll start there. Okay, so um, I, I'm nervous, so I'm going to go to something that I'm comfortable with. So Sarah, hit that question if you would, please. So we're going to take a second. And we, yeah. Oh, whoa. Okay. And so... Um, Okay, so, so don't answer. Don't blurt it out. This is one of them Facebook posts, you know, where it's like, leave the answer and I'm going to leave the correct ones. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I know. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, I know y'all trying to figure it out. And some of y'all are like, no, I will not do this. Shush, shush. Okay. So listen, listen. Now, I teach math one. I teach honors math two. And I teach pre-calculus. Okay. And... um. Listen, I can't, I can't get across any type of point with this if you don't listen, okay? And so I would throw a question like this on the board in my math one class, per se, right? Or sometimes I teach foundations of math two, foundations, it, it just depends, right? And I deal with kids that struggle with math. Maybe math is just not good, and we don't like math, and math numbers and letters shouldn't go together. All these things, I hear it all, right? Why do we need this, right? You've asked your math teacher that, I'm sure. Uh, and if you haven't, go ask them when you get there uh, to school next year. They'll love it, <laughs> okay? We don't love it, okay? Um, but anyway, so if I look at this question, what's it a question asking? What's it, what's it talking about? What, how do, what do you have to know to get this question right? <laughs> I'm going to cry. Uh, yes, PEMDAS, the order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or the way that Miss Branya at North Lenore taught me, please excuse my dear Aunt, uh, dear Sally Aunt, right? Because she said, you got to mix it up sometimes because it matters the order, right? Order, okay? And so, um, but how would you have solved this two years ago? Oh, uh, look, I see yourself, huh? You'd be like, you'd be like, oh yeah, oh, I got this math, photo math, right? Uh, y'all be hitting the photo math up or the math way. Yeah, come on. You, <laughs> now, <laughs> co hey, I mean, this is might be a touchy subject, but COVID was good to y'all, education-wise, some of y'all. I know it was. But, listen, the only reason I know that, the only, listen, the only reason I know that is because I've taught pre-calculus since COVID happened. And my pre-calculus class is like a needs a foundation of pre-calculus because the whole time they were in math three or the whole time they were in the subject during COVID, photo math was like, I mean, some of them, you'll understand what I'm saying, some of them paid for the subscription. 
That's how, it, that's how, that's how good it was, right? But, but I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll try to link it back to Jesus at some point. I'll tell you that um, when, problem, when the test came, right, when they showed up to school, listen now, quit talking. When they showed up to school the next year and when the test came, were they prepared? No, that grade looked good last semester. That, that grade ain't look that good this semester. But that's because, and some of y'all can relate, and I ain't going to call you out. I know who you are, okay? And um, some of y'all thought that, oh, I can just get by doing it my way. I'll be fine. But when the test comes later, we're going to struggle, and we're going we're gonna to not have been prepared for what we needed to like, no. Y'all with me? And so I, I count that as um, making sure we do things back to the problem on the board, right? We got to make the correct answer is four, by the way. Making sure, I know, I know, I know. I know y'all are like, come on, is it right? All right. Um, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I, that's the workshop on Friday. I'll do a, a math workshop. Um, And so I, I'll refresh your memory on what yesterday. What was the yesterday's theme? Uh, identity. Uh, thank you so much. You did awesome. I planted her there just so she would blurt that out. Yes. Uh, a different identity. That's right. Um, and so I took yesterday's lesson or message or, or the culmination of everything, and, like, it really made me have, like, a, a, I, some people will understand, a DTR, define the relationship, Right? It helped me um, define my relationship with Jesus. It, it called out my identity, right? Because some of us were like um, the, the Simon, I forget his name, Simon, I think, who was like, he wouldn't let her wash his feet if, she, if he knew, you know what I mean? Like, he tried to point out the, the woman's sin, and yet his sin was just as bad, right? And now, it might not have been just as bad in our eyes, but sin is sin, and um, it just really made me figure out or, or see more closely my identity and where I struggle. And so how do we fix that? Well, we got to do things in the right order, right? we got to have the PEMDAS of life. And maybe I should write a message with PEMDAS being like jesus -y stuff, but I'm not going to. It's okay. Um, and so we're going to go, uh, I think, if we want to do things in order, if we want to get the right order of operations on our life, it starts with your heart. We've got to have a different heart. Um, and that's today's thing. That's what you've been reading about. That's what you've been studying. That's what your counselors have tried to teach you. You've got to have a different heart. We can learn all the things that we need to learn, but if our heart ain't in the right place, if the right person's not in our heart, if, if that's not first and foremost, then Everything else is going to fall. Like, I could sit there and, and take that order of operations and do one step wrong, right? Put that picture back up if you would, Sarah, right? How bad would it screw up if I went ahead and squared that two first, right? Right? Exponents, that's right up there at the top. It's important. It's one of the first few things that we got to do, right? Please excuse exponents, right? What if I squared that two first? I don't know what I would get. I ain't going that far. I'm not that big of a nerd. Come on. But um, listen, what if we get things out of order? Well, they're not real, like, like they're not crazy out of order. I just did I switched up one little thing. I'm going to be wrong, right? I switched up one little thing in my life, one little priority, and I'm wrong. And so we got to get our heart right first. So I'm going to read some in the Bible, and that's always a good place to start. Um, and we're just going to read today's, I guess it's today's theme or scripture, um, and it's the parable of the sower in Mark 4. We're going to read it. And um, you might have heard several things that we're going to talk about tonight, um, but now's your chance. Maybe you heard about it in your small groups and in uh, your dorm devotions, and maybe you identified as, as one of the types of soil, and maybe you did this and that and the other, and, and you're, it's been in your heart, it's been in your mind all day, and there's, this, there's been this like tension in your life. Well, now, tonight, you're going to have an opportunity to act on that. And so, um, 
that'll be later. Just stay seated, and we'll get to the end of this ride before long, okay? So uh, Mark 4, it's going to be on the screen. Uh, verse 4. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it uh, out on the lake while all the people uh, were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables and and in his teaching said, listen. Is this where we are now? Are we there? My bad. I think I was in the wrong section, but we're right here. Listen. A farmer went out to sow his seed. Oh, there it is. Do I need to read that one? Is that the NIV version? I'll read this one. Okay. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came up and ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. (sighs) Shallow. Mm. Come back to that one. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30 and some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. And so we're going to talk about the four types of soil. Now, why do I start with the soil? Because everything else in question is perfect. Um, the sower is Jesus, right? Is God, is the triune, the Trinity, right? God is the sower, and the seed is the gospel. There is no mistake in those two things, right? We, we see scripture verses about the disciples not learning what they need to learn, not, not grasping the concept. Who was the disciples' teacher? It's okay, you can say it. Jesus, right? Jesus. Would Jesus make a mistake? No. Would he be the perfect teacher? Yes. Is what he's saying perfect and without error? Yes. Where was the issue? Well, the disciples, right? The soil. And so when God speaks to us and and when the gospel is presented to us and when the scriptures are, are, are given to us. The scripture is perfect. The, the one that inspired it is perfect. What is not perfect in the whole situation? Us, right? And so we're going to talk about the four types of soil. And some I'll elaborate on more and some I'll, I'll just kind of um, graze over. But the first one is the path. The soil that was trampled on and and whenever you know like whenever you whenever an area is walked over it gets really compact right it's really hard uh, you would need like something to break it up uh, to make it where you could kind of plant something and so it's been it's been kind of trampled on the whole time and so it's compacted and it's hard and the seed lands there and what happened to it the birds flew in grabbed the seed ate it right or it got trampled on some more and so um, I think, and um, I hope I don't get stoned to death as I'm making these uh, comparisons, but uh, I think the seed on the road are like some of the Pharisees that are in Scripture. I think that um, the gospel falls on deaf ears. How many times did the Pharisees sit in on one of these teachings that, that Jesus was kind of having, you know, this one by the lake, or when he's walking through town and healing people. How many times did they see and hear Jesus teaching and say, no, he ain't the one. I got it figured out. I know what I'm doing. I know what the scriptures say. I know what the scrolls say. I got it. Some of y'all, just like I was at one point, y'all think you had it under control. You think you knew who you were. You think you know what to do every day. You think you know how to build your relationships right. You think you know how to treat your friends. You think you know how everything in this life works. Why would I, why would I hear something that tells me to sacrifice? I don't need to sacrifice. I'm good. I got it. Right? Why would I hear something that tells me to love those that don't love me? Right? Why would I hear and, and give in to something that says love your enemies? Psych? Right? I got this, God. I'll do it. 
I'm good. And so I see that some of the Pharisees has hardened their hearts, and they didn't want to accept Jesus. And so Satan came in and, and grabbed that seat up. Um, a few examples, like the Pharisees sit there and say the disciples accused of violating the Sabbath. Jesus accused of violating the Sabbath uh, by healing. Pharisees accused Jesus of healing by demonic power. Unbelieving Pharisees always seeking signs and whatnot. How many times will you hear the good news that Jesus came and died on the cross for you and then was risen again? How many times are you going to hear that and just choose to live your life the same way? All right, a real question, right? How many times are you going to come to this mountain and hear the gospel and hear how our lives should, should reflect Christ and leave and go down to the valley and act the same exact way? Hmm. I hope not many more. The second seed, the seed that fell on rocky soil. It was shallow. We learn from the results of the seed sown on rocky soil that outward fervor is no sign of conversion. Now, what does that mean? Well, it, it goes on. Jesus, later in the scriptures, start to explain this whole parable. And he talks about the seed that was on the rocky soil. Even though it, it couldn't get really deep in the soil, and so it just had a little bit. And so all the, all the nutrients that was there, it sprouted way up tall, but it had no roots on the bottom, right? And so then when the sun came out and when it got hot, right, when, when your friends put the heat on you, when things happen that you might not like, when that sun heats everything up, it's scorched and it withers. Can you relate to that? Can you relate to some parts of your life where, man, I, I was at Cragmont and I... I lifted my hands for the first time, and I, and I even prayed at the altar, and everything was great. But I didn't do anything about changing my life. I didn't do anything about reading my scripture differently. I didn't do anything about how I treated my friends. And then my friends kind of peer pressured me one little time, and then boom, back, back to where I was. One little Snapchat came through, and, and it made me mad because I, I knew she was talking about me. Right? Boom, right back to where you were. Hello? Y'all hear me? Whether Jesus was making a comment about the saved or the unsaved, it wasn't clear. Jesus is explaining the parable to his disciples in regard to the kingdom. It's clear that the kingdom is not determined by how one initially responds to the gospel. But it's all about what happens after the fact. When you get home, how, how do you act? How do you respond when things aren't going your way? How, do, how does it look? All right, when... When your walk with Christ starts here, what do you do when you go out the doors? What do you do when you get back on the bus and go back home? Was it just a mountaintop experience that we talk about? Man, I hope not. Mountaintop's a great opportunity to hear the gospel, to receive the seed, not from this sower, not from that sower, not from this sower, but from the Lord, the perfect sower. But what do we do with it? Number three, the seed fell among the thorns. Now, this is the one that I struggled with. This is the one that we all, at some point, will struggle with and struggle with continually. Um, it's how it sometimes happens to me. It's how it happens to you. I see it every day. When I'm at hunt, teaching my little heart out, and I see... Kids in the hallways, and I've told my small group this this morning. I see kids in the hallway that are at the church that I help out with, that are in my FCA group, that, man, they, they look one way when they're, uh, when they're with me and with the youth pastor that I help out, and, and, and that's good and fine and all, but when they get in them hallways, they blurt out stuff that I don't want my daughter hearing, and they use words that I know that they shouldn't be using, and and the life that they're living doesn't reflect the one that we tried to teach them. And so what is that? Why does that happen? Well, the seed that fell among the thorns. Have you ever seen thorns? I know we have. We're rednecks, right? We're from eastern North Carolina. We know what thorns are, right? 
What do, how, what do thorns do? How do they act? What are they? Yeah, they poke. Okay, good. So we're dealing with the sharp part of thorns. I like that. And we're going to talk about that too. We might, I might switch it up just because you went that way. But what else do thorns do? Have you seen them? Yeah, they wrap around a tree and they choke it out, right? And so there's two things that thorns do, and we'll talk about both of them real quick. The first thing, and then we'll go to that one since it's the order of my notes. Um, we learned that some seed fell among the thorns. And certain thorns, I think, are the sins in your life. The sins that maybe nobody in here knows about. Maybe, maybe that girl, that boy sitting right next to you, they might know about them. But like not everybody else does because I, I hide them really well. All right? Maybe it's a relationship with a boyfriend or a girlfriend where you're like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to date them and I'm going to lead them to Jesus. I'm, hey, if it works, it works. It's just that I was always taught that the shoe will get muddy before the mud gets shoey. Okay? It's just think about it. Okay? The shoe will get muddy before the mud gets shoey. I'm pretty sure. Um, but there's relationships, not just, not just boy-girl relationships. There's relationships with uh, the girls or the boys that you have that point you in the wrong direction or peer pressure you. Or have a different heart than you do, and yet they pull you down. And they pull you in one direction that you, in, in, in your heart, you don't want to go. But you're vulnerable, and you want to fit in, or you want to have this status or, or that relationship, or you want to be in that group. And uh, so you just go with it. I don't know. It's an opportunity for ministry. I get it, right? We want to go fix that group. But that is, it can be. It, I'm not telling you not hang out with that group because that group does need Jesus, right? Just like we all do. But those are thorns. And we got to be careful. We have to have a different heart. Because if not, those thorns will wrap themselves around us. And we'll choke out our relationship with Christ. And it's like, I, I've heard the analogy like a python. A python doesn't just come up and bite you and kill you. Right? A python wraps itself around you. It squeezes a little bit. But not bad. But every time you breathe in and get smaller, it's going to wrap it a little bit more. It's not going to let you breathe out as much. And every time it's going to get tighter and tighter around you. And before long, you're suffocating because you can't get enough air. That's what thorns do. They'll wrap around a plant and choke it out. And then all of a sudden, one time, you're right there in that party group. You're right there in that friend group that bullies everybody. You're right there living the life that you said you wouldn't live when you were on this mountain. When you had an experience at your church. When you, in a random room, gave your heart to Christ, wherever it was. You let the thorns come up and, and choke out your relationship. And then there's another type, uh, another situation with thorns, right? What was it y'all said at the beginning? They, they hurt, right? They scratched me. They hurt me. They pierced my skin. They made me bleed, right? It was something painful. I, uh, I know y'all. I know y'all are going through so much pain. Some of you are dealing with um, what Connor spoke about last night. So many of you are dealing with loss of family members and not just that they died, but they went away and they, they left you or, or you were having to make a decision. And so there was a life event that was just painful. And so then when, when life gets painful and when we hurt, we kind of try to build up our defenses. I talked to my boys the other day. And it was just like a, a very manly trait is when something goes wrong, we, we bulk up at it. We want to, like, fight it off, right? And so when, when life events happen that we don't like, when pain occurs and, and when we're hurt, we want to bulk up and we, wanna, we don't want to show vulnerability. And so we fight back and we get mad. And we harden our hearts and we say, why would God let this happen? If he loved me, he wouldn't let me have gone through this pain. 
It's just a thorn. And we can't go away from the seed and the sower falling on good soil. Because the thorns are coming. They're there. It's just a matter of if you're going to be part of that soil or not, I guess. For those that have turned away from God because something bad happened in your life, maybe you've hardened your heart, like I said. You are in need, just like we all are. You are in need of a different heart. You got to have a heart change. And then there's one last one. The seed that fell in the good soil. Now the seed that fell in the good soil, can you put that verse back up? I don't remember which one it was, Sarah. I'm sorry. I know it was somewhere on the good soil one. Are you still back there? Uh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop. Some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Now some of us, I dare say, sat back this whole time I've been talking and said, mm -mm, I am good soil. I have done everything right my whole life. I attend LaGrange First Free Will Baptist Church. <laughs> that gives me a head start. No, I'm just kidding, Josh. <laughs> no, I, that was the only church I could remember. I should have went with Whole Road, right? Okay. Um, no, some of us, and, and I'm guilty of this, and so don't think I'm talking about anybody but myself. Some of us have been, and maybe you can relate to what I was saying, but don't tell me you were, okay? But you were sitting there saying, oh, I'm good soil. I'm at church camp. I come to church. This is my 10th year coming to church camp. I'm good soil. Me? I am soil. <laughs> that is good. And so we sit there and think we have it. But what's that last part say? It produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Now, I'll tell you. This is not in my notes, so if I screw it up, don't worry. We'll get back there. Uh, we go pick blueberries at one of my uh, former pastor's house, actually, in Wilson. And uh, we come up to these things. Oh, my gosh. They're literally as tall as Sawyer. I mean, they're huge. And they have so many blueberries. And, and my I have two daughters. I have a six-year-old and a two-year-old. And uh, my six-year-old... She tries to pick blueberries, but they never really make it to our house. It's always just pop in and then one and then eat that one and then she keeps on picking. And so we pick blueberries and these blueberries, oh my goodness, their fruit is 30 and 60 and whatever. It says 100 times what they started out with and they're so beautiful. And so me and my wife, we we're like, you know what? We got good soil at our house. We're going to plant blueberry bushes. There's like three, there's like three blueberries on them things. Like, I don't know what makes blueberry bushes blueberry, but like, ours do not blueberry, okay? <laughs> like, it's a life event. Like, my daughter, we, she will come in the house and be like, Dad, look at all these blueberries, and she's got two. I'm like, yes, baby. Do you, are we going to cut them up and share them? But our blueberry bushes don't produce any fruit. <laughs> and so um, there's another uh, Bible verse that I didn't ask about or didn't mention. But uh, it says if a, if a tree doesn't produce fruit, oh, do anybody remember the fig tree story? Right? If, a, if there's a fig tree, it didn't produce any figs. Apparently that's a thing. Uh, and... The vine dresser or the owner of the field came up and said, cut that thing down. It doesn't deserve soil, right? It doesn't deserve the soil that it's planted in because it is planted on that good soil, right? But a, a, a thing only deserves the good soil if it's going to produce fruit. And so, yes, the, that fourth seed should be like an exciting seed or, or soil that we talk about. But, like, there's some responsibility that comes with being good soil 
And there's like an expectation that that good soil has, and that is to produce fruit. Not just to produce some a fruit, but multiple fruits. And so um, it takes sun and fertilizer sometimes and water um, to make the effort to grow and to produce fruit. And so I'll ask you, which soil are you? Some of you think you got God figured out. Um, and you got it, and you're good, and you don't need us. You've hardened your hearts, and you become a pathway to just trample on the seed that falls. I would encourage you to soften your heart. Let the Holy Spirit work in your heart, because you do need Christ. You do need a different heart. Um, I'll read a story here as well. Out of Mark 5, Sarah. And um, it talks about a, a lady who tried everything. She tried it all. She spent year after year coming to the mountain. Oh, this will fix it. This week of camp will fix it. This this situation will fix it. This doctor can make me better. This, this, this. I've tried it all. I've spent everything I need to spend. But she hadn't met the master yet. Mark 5, verse 24. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. And has spent all she had. Some of us have tried everything we know of. We've, we've made friends with this group. And we've tried to cover up our vulnerabilities with that website. And we've put this substance in our body. And we've, we've done all these things to try to fix that gap or that hole in our heart. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding around you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. We can try all we want to um, to, to get rid of those thorns and to um, grow fruit and to do all of this and that and the other, to fill those gaps in our heart, to fix us, right? We can Google all we want to. We can photo math it. We can math wave it. We can, what's that Quizlet thing? All right, we can do whatever. Yeah, you already know. It's okay. Oh, yeah, that's the, one, that's the other one. We can do all we want to to try to fix it. But until... We go to Jesus and get a new heart, we're going to be in trouble. Because when the test comes, we're not going to know what we're doing. And so I want to tell you, I want to keep it simple. Um, whatever soil you are, I want to tell us and I want to talk about how do we, how do we become good soil? Where do we start? Where is the starting place for us to start producing fruit? And not just a blueberry, but like hundreds of blueberries, right? We should be producing fruit. We should be leading our friends to Christ. We should be loving and, and being patient, having self-control and, and gentleness and kindness. We should have all these fruits. We should be leading Bible studies and, and you have the opportunity with the technology out there today. You have the greatest mission field at your fingertips, in your hand, with your cell phone. And what do we use it for? 
sending us half pictures of our face <laughs> with the letter S on the screen, right? <laughs> that is true. You got to put it on your knee. Um, and so I'm going to tell you, stay with me. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. Uh, if, if the boys want to come up. You heard this um, with Josh, and I'm going to tell it again because some of us still don't get it. And um, I've kind of vowed to myself, I told my small group this, or I might have told uh, all the boys in, in the motel this earlier today. I take great responsibility um, when I speak to young people, be it FCA or um, the youth group where I help out at. I think that, uh, and, and I told this to them earlier today, so um, they would have already heard this, but in our youth group, um, in the last, I'd say, 10 or 12 years I've been there, I've been there 12 years, we've had three kids come through upstream. Now, one of them was only there for a couple weeks. The two I know really well. Three kids that come through our youth group, and they, they've died. They're no longer living. And uh, for any youth minister or any youth leader, there's this tension that we have, and there's this, um, this burden or this call on our hearts because we are, we feel responsible for your heart. We feel responsible, and it's our job to make sure that you've heard what Christ did for you. And so I'm going to start out, I'm going to tell you that God created us to be with him. It's a beautiful thing. He created me because he wanted to hang out with me. He created you because you are special and you are chosen and you are awesome. And he wants to hang out with you. He wants to pour into your life. He wants to speak into your life. But we're dumb. And our sin, our sin from Adam and Eve and our sin that we have in our heart, we're, we're born bent in the wrong direction. You couldn't help it. It's just how we are. It's not your fault. It's just the way it is. But God sees that. And he, he made a way. He made a way for us. Because he sent his only son. I love y'all. But my kids are mine. My two little girls, they ain't going nowhere. I wouldn't give them up for anything. And God gave his only son, only one, and sent him down to this earth. And he lived a perfect life. And he taught the disciples and he poured into them and he, and he, he illustrated it in the scripture. And then he willingly chose to die on the cross for our sin. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died on the cross, but he didn't stay there. Some of us don't know that. He didn't stay there. He was risen. The power of God raised him from the dead after the third day. And if we believe that, Everyone who believes that, and you confess it, you will have eternal life. And life that means, life that's eternal means we'll be with him forever. He'll get what he wants. God will, he has the opportunity, he has created an opportunity for us to give him what he wanted in the first place, and that's us. Remember at the very beginning, God created us to be with him. And so I want you to bow your head for me.
Because you've been talking and your, your counselors have poured into you today. And, and you are right there ready to make a decision for Christ. You are right there ready and you just haven't maybe had an opportunity yet. It's now. And I'm going to talk to four people, four different people. The first one, you think you've had it all figured out this whole time. You've heard the good news of the gospel time after time after time again, but you never changed. You were like the Pharisees. You thought you had it all figured out. I'm good by myself. I don't need this in my life. I'm only here because my mom made me come. I'm only here because I'm trying to holler at that girl over there. I'm only here because my friend group came, and I don't know what they're doing. I got this. I don't need it. I would ask you to rethink that because I don't have it figured out either. You don't have it figured out whether you think you do or not. The second person, you have these mountaintop experiences every week that we come to camp, but it doesn't change what your life looks like when you get home. This is an opportunity for you to start over. The idea of what type of soil you are is a daily idea. We can choose to be soil and take up our soil right now and be good soil. But it starts right now. It starts with you confessing openly that you need Christ and that you need a different heart. So it's not just a mountaintop experience, but it's a life-changing, life-altering decision. Maybe you got some thorns in your life. The altar is a perfect place to lay down those thorns. The sin in your life that you know about, the sin in your heart that you just can't seem to break, that you can't seem to get rid of, this is a perfect place down here for you to show the world that you're going to try. You're going to try, and with the Holy Spirit's help, you're going to be successful. This is a perfect opportunity for you to get rid of that pain that you've been carrying around, for you to get rid of that sin that you've been carrying around, that you've been trying to hide, that does nothing but weigh you down. This is a perfect opportunity for you. And then what we think is that good soil, there's a place for you here too. I got a relationship with Jesus. I'm doing my own thing. I'm, I'm doing my Bible study. I'm, I'm working. I'm trying my best. Maybe you're not satisfied with the amount of fruit you're producing. This is a perfect opportunity for you to get some fertilizer. Talk to Jesus and get some of that sun. This is a, a, a fantastic opportunity for you. And so wherever you are, whoever you are, I'd ask you to come. Josh is going to play a song. And I would ask you, if, if you're one of those four, if there's something in your life that you've got to get right, if you've never asked Christ into your heart, if you want to know more about what that is, I, I would ask you to come forward. If there's some thorns in your life that, that are just choking out that relationship that you have with Christ, I'd ask you to come up and be brave. Step out. Be a leader. And come down to the altar. He's here. The Holy Spirit's here. And he wants you to have a chat with him. So God, I pray right now that you will come into this place, that you will meet these kids at this altar, that you will meet these kids in their seat, that you will meet these kids in their heart.
wherever they are, whatever they're doing, God, I pray that you will have your way in this room. That your Holy Spirit will have its way in the hearts of these young people, of these old people, of all, all those under the sound of my voice, Lord. Father, I pray uh, for whatever decisions being made. God, I pray that uh, the thorns in our life that we struggle with, um, we can hand them over to you. God, I pray that if we're not producing the fruit like we need to, that you'll give us a, a, a fresh fire. Here's our heart, Lord. my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Come on, let's sing that together. Here's my Listen to these words. Cause I am found, I am yours, I am love, I may. So I'm going to do something just a touch different than we're used to. Because I think it's, uh, I think it's an important distinction. And I think it's an opportunity for you to be open about uh, your relationship with Christ. And so I'm going to ask um, if I can get some counselors back there um, uh, in the back, my left. And if you're one... Um, that wants to give their heart to Christ for the first time. I'm going to ask that you just slip up and, and go back here to my left. Um, and there's going to be some counselors that are there waiting for you. They just want to kind of talk to you about what that means and, and what it looks like and, and maybe some answer some questions that you might have. Um, you don't have to be real crazy getting up, but if you want to, um, as we sing this next song, if you want to kind of sneak back there, I want you to do that. Um, if there's an opportunity for you to get questions answered, I want you to have that. Um, and we have some counselors that love you and just want to point you in the right direction. Um, so if you've made the decision for Christ for the first time, 
or you've rededicated your life or something like that, I want you to go speak to one of those counselors. Um, but also, if, if you're done and you're good and your heart and mind is clear, I'm going to ask you to exit out this side over here uh, to my right, your left. And we're going to continue to have an altar time. Uh, we're going to continue to have conversations here and counselors are going to be available for you. Um, but I want you to keep this atmosphere here um, where we are. Cause you are good, you're good.
for the weak. Let faith arise. Let faith
Capturing my heart again. He catching my heart again. Your love is extravagant. Your friendship. Capturing my heart again. You capture my heart. 